making a background for our poster and compositing it from found images. So these clouds I found, this photo of the yellow boards I found, the thing I painted was this gradation, right? I can use these in different ways layered on top of each other. And I can rasterize them at any time. And I can change them even more, especially with direct adjustments, right? So I can play with hue saturation. If I like the, the wooden boards, but I don't quite like the color, I can play with the hue, the brightness, how colorful it is. Now, when you work with it enough, and I say that this assignment teaches you a lot of very, very marketable skills because you're dealing with graphics, you're dealing with type, and now you're dealing with putting it all together into a poster. So having background, image, and type together. I start creating kind of a database of, of different images that can be good for backgrounds, like scans of watercolors, different textures, I think this one might be interesting. You can layer these things up. And then of course you can play with the color. By rasterizing and then playing with image hue saturation. So even though this was a blue watercolor, I could play with making it a different color range in the yellows, in the reds, in the greens. I can play with image levels, adjustment levels, and play with its lights and darks. Lighten its midtones. Darken its midtones. And I can play with color balance if I want really subtle control of its color. So in the shadows, I can really push blues. All right, kind of bringing out some of those colors. And in the highlights, I can push the warms. And then in the midtones, let's see. Maybe something like that. So there's a reason we went through compositing as our first unit so we can control all of this stuff. Then I can free transform it, you know, option command T. I can grow it more. I can just stretch out the one corner. It's okay if our backgrounds get pretty low res. Because at the end of the day, we want the background to be softer than our, our clean vector type and spot illustration. So if I do something like that, then I can play with opacity and have that affect other layers below. Or I can play with blending modes, these layer styles. Well, not la layer styles, these blending modes that try different ways of overlapping the two. Which can be interesting. Sometimes they're really strong. Sometimes they're subtle. But it's always for you to customize it. So between blending styles or blending modes and opacity, you can really control a lot.
So maybe I like a background kind of like that. Maybe I set this to dissolve mode, which I like. Just to give me a little bit of that texture throughout. And if I zoom in, you'll see what this background gives you. Now you want it just to complement your work, right? But we choose this before we finish coloring the type so we know what our type is reacting to. And then I created one over the weekend because I like this stuff. So I'll bring in the background I created. Again, just composites, gradations. Stretch it to fit. Hold down shift to distort it. And you'll see that this already has a white border on it, but we'll learn how to make our own white border. And if I move that up above the others, that's the one I created. But then I could kind of sync it or let it blend with the, uh, the other things I just created, right? In the same way, playing with blending modes, playing with opacity. can use it to darken everything. There's little stars, little planets. Maybe I don't want the lines anymore. Yeah, I think there could be something there. And I get to decide all the components that, that suit it. So the last step for the background is making a border. And this you want to do in a really simple way. It's how you control the overall format. So maybe I think there's too much empty space around. So I'm going to free transform, option command T. and frame this around my illustration in a way I think is, is good. If I want to do that with the others, I can, but it's helpful to have guides. So I'm going to use my move tool at the top and from my rulers, move down and frame it in with guides. Then I'm going to rasterize all of these different backgrounds. I've already rasterized them. Come on, turn on. And I can actually select them all at once and then free transform. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to crop them. So I'm not wasting so much memory on all that stuff that's outside of the frame anyway. Okay, now I can take all of these, free transform them. Come on, select them all. I can put them in a group and do it that way too. Hmm, there we go. And then, not, not quite yet. Let's crop them each individually. I want to get off all that extra stuff. Okay. Now I'll take all those backgrounds behind the one I like, put it into a folder. Try to free transform that folder. I don't know why it's still big. It shouldn't still be big, but I can. Nonetheless, this is just a way it's different than Photoshop, I guess. This cropping should have taken care of that. Ah. I do not want to crop down to that. I'm overtaxing Photo P, showing you too many options for the background. So I gotta let Photo P catch up with me. Okay. So 
So I'll just transform them one at a time. And just kind of shrink them down until I think they look good within the frame. Remember, if you hold down shift, it will all transform for you and, sh and distort. And then last, this one. So now, how do I get clean white borders around what I have? I'm going to use my guides. And I'm going to create extra guides around those. Actually, I don't even need to do that. I already have my guides. I'm going to use my white. I'm going to use my uh, rectangular marquee tool. Create a new layer at the top. Call it white borders. This is a new layer floating above everything. I use my rectangular marquee tool. Select everything up to my guides which frame my image where I want them. And then I'm going to say edit fill with 100% white. Normal mode. So that gives me kind of my own mat that covers everything up. Then I can use my cropping tool and kind of cut the paper. So I want everyone to have a white border. Question? Yeah, I'll often weight the bottom a little bit, just do a little bit thicker at the bottom. But as long as it's pure white, that just helps you control the formatting. And it helps you control matting and, you know, printing. You always want to have a white border around your jobs because otherwise it's what's called a full bleed job. And that means that it needs to be printed and then cut down because printers can't print all the way to the edge of the paper. So you always design where you want that edge to be. Come on. Crop. There we go. Uh, and get, get, then get off the crop tool as soon as you can. <laughs> All right, so you can see my white border. And then if I want the white border to be a little bit smaller, all I have to do is free transform it, hold down Option, and it will shrink in at those same proportions, right? So if I want it more like this, if I hold down Shift, I can pull it right to the edges I want. So I have to decide, do I want it with, come on, activate that transform. Okay, good. Do I want it with that edge or do I want it with this edge? My poster. These are the kinds of things you can, can play with in choosing where your edge goes. And I think I'm going to simplify it, use this edge. Or I might even decide, show you another border, make another copy. This is all part of the design. Transform that. Hold down Option and Shift and close it in. So just looks kind of nice and clean like that. And yeah, I think maybe clean is the best way. Now, what if I wanted what's called piping, like a little inner line? Well, I can take the white border that I've used, and I can create a stroke for it with my layer styles. So let's give it a dark blue piping, kind of an outline around the edge. 